Welcome to molding and casting a cosplay cloak brooch. This is part two. We sculpted the original in a previous video out of Siobhan's alien clay. My sculpture is already flat at the back, so I can press it down gently to secure it to the base. I'm trying to help reduce any silicone from flowing underneath and displacing my model. Now that the sculpture is secure on the flat surface, I can start making my mold box. Hot glue helps me secure my mold walls. I'm using a clear piece of plexi in the front so that you can see what's going on when I pour my mold. I'm now going to apply three more pieces of foam core to make sure I have a watertight mold box. Once I have the mold box assembled, I go over it with another layer of hot glue at the seams to help prevent leaks from occurring in my mold. For this mold, we're going to use Dragon Skin 10 NV. I chose this material because it has a low viscosity and a one-to-one -one bi volume mix ratio. It's easy to use and doesn't require me to have any additional equipment. Smooth-On has a great mold rubber calculator that can tell you how much you need based on how much space you're filling up. I'm making a pourable mold, so I need the Pour-On Mold Estimator. Simply select the material you're using and add your measurements to figure out how much material you'd need for any given project. After I open the containers, the first thing I do is thoroughly pre-mix the silicone. I want to make sure that all those liquid components are evenly distributed before I pour it out. Because Dragon Skin NV is one-to-one -one by volume, I need the same amount of part A and the same amount of part B to be able to mix it together. I combine the part A and the part B together and start mixing. While I mix, I make sure to scrape the sides and scrape the bottom of the container so that I can get it all mixed up evenly. Doing a double mix and mixing again helps me ensure that the mold rubber is as thoroughly mixed as possible. Now that my material is mixed, I can start to pour my mold. Alien clay is silicone friendly, so we can pour directly onto the clay without needing to seal it. When pouring my mold rubber, I stay in one spot and pour to the lowest point of my mold in a thin stream. This helps me reduce the amount of bubbles I entrap in my mold. I let the material rise around the model and seek its level. Dragon Skin 10 NV has a cure time of 75 minutes at room temperature. Brushing isopropyl alcohol helps relax that hot glue so I can remove my mold walls. It's easy to pop those mold walls off with just a little bit of pressure. I lift evenly on the mold to help break that vacuum seal that's underneath the sculpture. Because the sculpture hasn't been glued down, it lifts up with the mold. A very thin layer of mold rubbers flowed underneath, but that's easy enough to remove. Unfortunately, anytime you make a mold, you have the potential to damage or destroy the original. I'm lifting it out lightly, and it preserves a lot of the shape. The clay removed clean without any residue left on the mold. Now that the mold's been cleaned up, we can start casting into it. Smoothcast 325 Urethane Resin is a color match material. It's clear amber in appearance, so it'll be translucent when it's cured, making it ideal for my project. To premix my part A and premix my part B, I shake the material thoroughly, making sure that the lid's secure on the top. Since our part A is moisture sensitive, we are going to dispense out our part B first and add some colorant. This is UVO blue. Just a drop adds a lot of color, so a little bit goes a long way. It'll help diffuse the light when I light it up with an LED. Because Smoothcast 325 is a one-to-one -one bi volume mix, we need the same amount of the part A and the same amount of the part B. The part B has the blue in it. I have two and a half minutes to mix up the Smoothcast 325 at room temperature. At the end of the pot life, the material enters its gel state and it starts to become a solid. I need to have it poured into my mold before that happens. I mix quickly, but I make sure to scrape the sides and the bottom of the container. When I pour the Smoothcast 325, I pour it in a long thin stream to the lowest point of the mold. 
This helps displace bubbles on the way down and help them rise to the top. A little bit of heat from a torch helps break the surface tension and release those bubbles that have floated up to the top of the casting. Smoothcast 325 has a cure time of 10 minutes at room temperature. The casting demolds easily from the Dragon Skin 10 V mold. You can see that the color is more concentrated in the thicker section of the casting. This is just because there's more material in those thicker sections than in the thinner sections of the casting. Ultimately, I want an LED behind the casting. Our casting isn't water clear. The surface has a little bit of opacity because of the texture of the original sculpture. This helps diffuse the light of the LED. I'm doing a color test so that I can see what the LED looks like behind the casting. Now we can paint the casting in the areas we don't want the LED light to shine through. I'm going to use Smoothon's Maker Pro paints to paint the casting. I start with an adhesion promoter. This goes on clear. I'm coating the entire piece. This will help the paint stick to it better. It also makes my unpainted areas a little more glossy. I let the adhesion promoter dry for an hour before I come back to paint the next layer on. Once that's dried, I can paint a layer of black paint on top of it. I only paint the black on the areas I want to be opaque. The areas where I want the LED to shine through, I leave open. It's okay if the black is still wet when I add my silver. I actually want the black and the silver to blend in together to make more of a, a gunmetal look. I do this same paint technique across the whole form so that it's all the same color of silver, although there can be some variation in those darker shadows. The silver paint looks great and helps draw attention to the highlights of the sculpture. I'm really happy with how the paint turned out. I'm just going to let this dry before I apply it to my costume. Once the paint's dry, I can do an LED test and take a look at the casting with a light behind it. I love how the center gem looks. Now that the casting's secured to my cloak, I can wear it out anywhere. I'm really happy with how this casting turned out. Thanks for checking out the video, and good luck with your cosplay projects. See you at the next convention.